Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a book haul. I've got a few books that I ordered from Amazon and Book Depository and I have a few books um, because I actually visited a used bookstore. Um, it was very, very fun. I, I haven't uh, left the house much recently um, if, it, if it's not for an appointment and so it was actually really fun <laughs> to go out just for fun and I hadn't been like kind of just browsing in a bookstore in so long. So Erin and I went to our local used bookstore um, and we picked up a few books. So I'm going to start with the books that we got I got from Amazon on, and Book Depository and then I'll show you what I picked up at the used bookstore. So first up I got No Name by Wilkie Collins. This is a Penguin Classics edition so that's fantastic. I love Penguin Classic editions. I'm slowly collecting Wilkie Collins um, as I can find the books. Um, they're not always all that easy to get a hold of. No Name sounds really interesting. So Wilkie Collins wrote in the Victorian time period um, quote, she's an unbroken filly. Let her caper and kick in the paddock to her heart's content. Time enough to break her to harness when she gets a little older. End quote. Magdalene and her sister Nora, beloved daughters of Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Vanstone, find themselves the victim, victims of a catastrophic oversight. Their father has neglected to change his will, and when the girls are suddenly orphaned, their inheritance goes to their uncle. Now penniless, the conventional Nora takes up a position as a governess, but the defiant and tempestuous Magdalene cannot accept the loss of what is rightfully hers and decides to do whatever she can to win it back. With the help of cunning Captain Rag, she concocts a scheme that involves disguise, deceit, and astonishing self-transformation. In this compelling labyrinthine story, Wilkie Collins brilliantly demonstrates the gap between justice and the law, and in the subversive Magdalene, he portrays one of the most exhilarating her heroines of Victorian fiction. <laughs> so that sounds very good. I picked up a couple of books in the Inspector Sing series by Shimini Flint. This is A Calamitous Chinese Killing and A Ballet Conspiracy Most Foul. A Ballet Conspiracy Most Foul is the second book in the series where Inspector Singh is sent to Bali. Um, there is a bomb has been exploded and he's sent to help with anti-terrorism efforts, but he can't understand why because he doesn't know anything about anti-terrorism or bombs. Um, but of course it's because his superiors just wanted to get rid of him for a while. Um, but this one, this one was a really great one in the series, um, and I would like to collect this series, so I was excited to, to get a hold of that one. Um, a Calamitous Chinese Killing is the sixth book in the series, and he goes to China in this one, and this is the next up for me in the series, so I haven't read this one yet, uh, so I was really excited to, to get this copy. <clears throat> Uh, Inspector Singh is on a mission to China against his better judgment. The son of a bigwig at the Singapore Embassy has been bludgeoned to death in the, a back alley in Beijing. Chinese security insists that he was the victim of a robbery gone wrong, but the young man's mother demands that Singapore's finest, in his own opinion, rides to the rescue. By, but solving a murder in a country that practices socialism with Chinese characteristics, that's in quotes, is a dangerous business and it soon becomes apparent that getting to the bottom of this calamitous killing will be Singh's toughest case yet. So yeah, I'm excited to dive into that. I also found With a Bear Bodkin by Cyril Hare. Now this cover is like extremely boring, uh, but I don't care because this is a hard book to get a hold of, so I'm really glad that Faber finds Faber and Faber, Faber and Faber, uh, decided to reprint it. <clears throat> Cyril Hare wrote this in 1946. Uh, it's, uh, it's got the same character, Francis Pettigrew, um, that was introduced to us in Tragedy at Law. That's, an, uh, that's a book I also have that I haven't read yet, so that one's from 1942. The Blitz has forced the evacuation of various government offices from London and Pettigrew accompanies his ministry to the distant seaside resort of Marset Bay. In this strange atmosphere, Pettigrew begins to fall in love with his secretary, who is also being courted by a widowed man much older than her. 
Bored and restless, the ministers start playing a lighthearted game of plan the perfect murder to pass the time. Pettigrew is detached from the silliness until a real murder happens and he is drawn into solving the puzzle. So yeah, I was really excited to find that, that one. I also found The Hollow Man by John Dixon Carr. This is a Dr. Gideon Fell mystery. He wrote this in... 1935. The first deadly walking of the Hollow Man took place when the side streets of London were quiet with snow and the three coffins of the prophecy were filled at last. The murderer of Dr. Grimald walked through a locked door, shot his victim, and vanished. He killed his second victim in the middle of an empty street with watchers at each end, yet nobody saw him, and he left no footprints in the snow. And so it is up to the irrepressible, larger-than-life Dr. Gideon Fell to solve this most famous and taxing of locked room mysteries. That one sounds really, really good. I picked up one of the Constable um, books, Constable Over the Style by Nicholas Ray. I have a couple of these books, um, and they're just so fun. They're, they're set in Yorkshire um, <clears throat> during the 60s. This is the 20th one in the Constable um, Constable Nick series and um, it was originally published in 1998. This says that it's a revised edition from 2021 and so I'm curious about what they did, how they revised it. Um, the Yorkshire Moors are full of secrets. Constable Nick thinks he knows his patch like the back of his hand, but events are about to prove him wrong. As always, the trouble starts with Claude Jeremiah Greengrass and his flea-bitten dog. Trust them to trip over a stile and stumble on a small fortune, a trove of silver coins to be precise. Who is the rightful owner? In Greengrass's eyes, finders are always keepers, but Nick has other matters on his mind, including the girl guide who's tumbled down a waterfall the convicted murderer who's just moved to the village, the nervous agoraphobic who refuses to leave her own shed. Not to mention those whisperings of the escaped great train robber. Could this notorious criminal be living under Nick's very nose? All right, and then I got The Indian Man in the ba Brown Sherwani by Rhea Emily Kapoor. This one caught my eye because it is a retelling of The Man in the Brown Suit by Agatha Christie. And that is one of my favorite Agatha Christie's. And so I thought this was intriguing to do a retelling of that story in India. I was really interested to, to see what happens here. A young Indian woman gets wrapped up in a deadly scheme. New to the city, Anan, and Anam, sorry, is hungry for adventure. When she witnesses a shocking accident at the train station, a man named Karnan falls onto the tracks, dying instantly. Only Anam notices the slip of paper he dropped, a mysterious sequence of numbers. Later, when another dead person is found strangled to death and the only suspect is an unknown man in a brown shawani, Anam becomes obsessed with the case. She soon finds herself in the company of killers and thieves as she attempts to unravel a scheme of murder, betrayal, and stolen diamonds. So yeah, I'm intrigued by that. This book came out in 2020. Okay, let's uh, dive into what I found at the used bookstore. I got Because of the Cats by Nicholas Freeling. This is a Van der Valk thriller set in Amsterdam. It's set in a seaside town. Um, and so yeah, that just sounded really interesting, interesting to me. And it was published in, first published in 1963. I found Stage of Fools by Charles A. Brady. This is a novel of Sir Thomas More, which that sounded really interesting. I love historical fiction and that's a time period that I'm really interested in. This was originally published in 1956. Henry, and so it's around the time of Henry VIII and Sir Thomas More is, um, I can't remember, he's some kind of a minister to the king, I think. Anyway, so that looked interesting. 
I found a rump hole of the Bailey. This is Rump Hole and the Golden Thread by John Mortimer. I love these series. Um, rump Hole is a barrister or a lawyer or something. And uh, so these are entertaining kind of legal uh, comedies. Uh, they're, I think they're, they're fairly lighthearted, pretty funny. I found Murder in the Queen's Garden by Amanda Carmack. This is an Elizabethan mystery. I like this series. It's set in the Elizabethan time period. And this one is the third in the series. Um, and so this is set in 1559. Elizabeth has been on the throne for six months and life in England seems newly golden. But for the royal court, murder and betrayal are foretold in the stars. The main character in this series is Kate Haywood, who is the Queen's personal musician. And so I like, I like that. I thought that was an interesting take on, uh, <clears throat> on, uh, you know, an amateur sleuth. Um, this is We the Bereaved by Anna Clark. I have a couple other books by Anna Clark. She wrote Mysteries in the 90s. This one is from, oh, nope, this one's much earlier. This is 1982. Um, for nearly a year, Lennon solicitor Harry Johnson had been obsessed with one question, who killed his wife? He never expected that the answer would come from the deathbed of a Sussex spinster. Harry Johnson didn't know Miss Miranda Porlock during her life, but summoned to her hospital room, he arrived in time to receive an unexpected legacy, one that sent him searching for the mysterious link between an old woman's last will and testament and his wife's violent death. And then I found a couple of classics. This is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth um, Braden, Braden. This is a um, world's classic, an Oxford world's classic. Um, I thought that I had this book, but it turns out that I didn't. So I'm excited uh, that I was able to find a copy. This was written in 1862. And then I also found Francis Burney's Evelina. This is also an Oxford World's classic. This is um, a book that I've, I've heard about um, and I am excited to dive into it. This is from, this is from, I believe earlier. Yeah, she wrote this in 1778. <laughs> Lord Orville did me the honor to hand me to the coach, talking all the way of the honor I had done him. Oh, these fashionable people. So this is apparently Francis Burney's first uh, popular novel. It is vivid, satirical, and the seductive account of the pleasures and dangers of fashionable life in late 18th century London. All right, so there you have it. Those are the books that I picked up recently. Have you read any of these books? I would love to hear your thoughts of them in the comment section down below. Do any of these uh, books sound interesting to you? Um, I would love to chat with you about all of those things and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.